Question 7. Uh, there's this crazy diagram. A, and, a, B and B C are lines of greater slope on a fixed triangular prism. Oh, I don't want to read it all. <laughs> there you can see there are some angles there, there's a pulley. Most of it is smooth, but between M and C it's not. It's rough. Let's, um, let's put some kind of rough thing. There we are. Let's um, there. There, it's rough down that bit. Things are getting caught up on the stars. Um, the smooth pulley is fixed to the prism of B. The string passes over it. There we go. Stuff happens. Right. So it's, it's released from rest. Show that the initial acceleration of the particles is 0 0.7 meters per second per second, and find the tension of the string. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep scooting to another page for this. So I drew two diagrams. I want to think about what's happening to both sides of what's going on. We've got P and we've got Q. Here is my P diagram, and here is my Q diagram. So P is here on the roof. We've got the tension in the string, which is pulling it up the roof. We've got a reaction, which I'm going to call RP, between the uh, a contact force there. We've got the weight, 0.3G. We've got an angle here of 30 degrees. And it would be accelerating up the roof with an acceleration of A. On the other side of the roof, particle Q is behaving in a largely similar way. We have the tension in the string, equal and opposite to the uh, other end of the string. We've got a normal contact force, RQ, there, and we've got a weight of 0.4g, and here we have an angle of 30 degrees, because the angle of the slope of the roof is 30 degrees on that side as well. So there's, there's my diagram, and Q is accelerating with the same acceleration in that direction down the roof. So that's what's going on. So let's work out my equations here. If I resolve, I've got no friction, it's all a smooth contact, so I don't need to worry too much about the value of R. I can ignore that pretty much. I've got um, T minus 0.3 G sine 30 is the mass times acceleration out of that one. And I did end up working not particularly in exact numbers, but I stored these numbers on my calculator as I went, although I think this is exact, isn't it? T minus 1.47 is 0.3a. Over here, so that was P. For particle Q, if I resolve in that direction, taking down, one, down the slope as positive, I've got 0.4g sine 30 minus T is 0.4 times A this time, which gives me 1.96 minus T is 0.4A. So I'm setting up my simultaneous equations. It's all come together very nicely though, hasn't it? Because these equations are lovely. If we just add the two equations together, that gives us um, plus T minus T, so the T cancels out. Minus 1.47 plus 1.96 is 0 0.49. 0 0.3a plus 0.4a is 0.7a. So a is 0 0.7 metres per second per second. Great start. The question said find a and the tension in the string, didn't it? So we're going to sub that value of a back in. t is 0 0.3 times 0 0.7 plus 1.47. So it gives us a tension of 1.68 newtons. There we go. You see how important it is to be organised and set it out clearly. You're just setting up simultaneous equations. Don't jumble everything together. Keep things kind of separate and clear and spaced out. And you know where everything's coming together. That's I like the way I've set that out. It's nice, isn't it? Right. That was part one. Part two then, the particle Q reaches M, that midpoint, 1.8 seconds after being released from rest. Find the speed of the particles when Q reaches M. Well, nothing's changed up to this point. We're just saying um, the speeds when it reaches this point. Are we, are we told anything about where M is or anything like that? Um, it's 1.8 seconds later. I don't think we are, are we? 
So let's uh, let's work our way through this. We're just using what we already know for part two. We've got them released from rest. We're spending 1.8 seconds watching them scoot over the top of this roof. We found the acceleration is 0.7. I want to find the velocity. I'm going to use v equals u plus a t. So v is 0.7 times 1.8. So 1.26 meters per second. I've got a velocity of 1.26 at the moment where we hit the bit where the uh, things would change. Great. The question also said at this point, oh, it says after Q passes through N, the string remains taut, but the particles decelerate uniformly. Q comes to rest between N and C 1.4 seconds after passing through N. Find the deceleration of the particles while Q is moving from M towards C. Well, actually, what we did, the string remains taut, so we've just got the same kind of constant acceleration thing going on here. We've got a new acceleration, but we need to just find out what, that, what the acceleration is. We've got another bit of SUVAT work to do with this. We've got, now, after n, we have an initial speed of 1.26. That's the speed at which it hits this point. We've got 1.4 seconds to watch what's going on. After 1.4 seconds, they've come to rest. So V is zero, and I want to find acceleration. So we're on another V equals U plus A2 thing. This time we've got zero, is 1.4. Nope, that's the wrong value. Zero is 1.26 plus 1.4 A which gives an acceleration of minus 0.9 metres per second per second. And of course I care about this, that we answer the question correctly. The question said find the deceleration. I'm not sure I spelled deceleration, I don't know how that is 0.9 metres per second per second. Let's make sure we answer exactly what it was after. Great! So what next? We're doing okay, we've got down to here. By considering the motion of P, find the tension in the string while Q is moving from M towards C. So during this little period of time, when we've got this reduced acceleration, we're told the tension remains in the string, the string remains taut. I am after another diagram to try and work out what's going on here. So part 4A, by considering P, we've now got, this is the particle P, Still moving up the slope, still no friction, still everything the same. We've got a new value of the tension in the string. Still got the same weight of 0.3g at an angle of 30 degrees. We've still got a normal reaction. I still don't particularly care what the normal reaction is, I don't think. We've now got that there is an acceleration. Well, that's... Um, Let's think about how we do the uh, direction here. That's the direction of motion, isn't it? It's still moving up the plane. But it has an acceleration of minus 0.9 up the plane. So I'm still going to take that as being positive, but there, there we've got our acceleration of minus 0.9. So we have T minus 0.3 G sine 30 is mass times acceleration which is minus 0.9. And if I rearrange that equation, I get T is, well this gives us 1.47 minus 0.27. So I have a tension in the string of 1.2 newtons. And that was just from carefully looking at what happens to particle P. Then, the final bit of the question has asked us for calculate the magnitude of the frictional force which acts on Q whilst it's moving from M towards C. I, I need another diagram. I want to think what's happening to particle Q at this point. Here's particle Q. It still has a weight of 0.4 G. That's 30 degrees. 
it has a tension and actually I know that that tension is 1.2 it has a reaction that's up there what else is happening? Well it's now in the rough part of the reef for whatever reason the roof is, the roof is rough the rough is roof um, and so it's now got frictional a uh, frictional force opposing the motion, so friction is there as well. And we still have an acceleration of minus 0.9 that's connected by that, uh, that bit of string. So if I try and pull this together now, I've got 0.4 g sine 30 minus f minus 1.2 is mass times acceleration. I'm running out of board a little bit there, but can you see what we've done there? And if I rearrange that equation to get f on its own, f f would be what are you going to do here? 0.4g sine 30, so 0.2g minus 1.2 um, which way around do I take it? So that's plus 0.36 that's right isn't it? And that gives me f as being 1.12 newtons at the end of it. Oh, and again, we didn't need to do anything about the, the normal contact force because it didn't ask us for the coefficient or that it could have done. Um, but there we go.